Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And um, I mean, obviously you can see that this grid must be just a placeholder grid, mustn't it? Obviously I'm gonna show you something with some numbers or markings in it, you would assume. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, first of all, don't forget that on Patreon, there's always loads of extra content, um, including all sorts of uh, crossword stuff, and longer Sudoku solves, and our monthly Sudoku hunt runs from the 1st to the 20th for a prize, but stays there forevermore afterwards, so, uh, so far anyway. So do give those a try. Um, it's great fun, it's very good value. As are our apps, they are basically five or six bucks for 100 puzzles hand-created by, um, by either ourselves or people we've commissioned who are amongst the best constructors of Sudoku in the known universe. So you get some incredible puzzles to practice your techniques on there. And we heartily recommend them, um, along with Sven Sudoku Pad and our merch. And you can find the links to all that under the video, where you can also find a link to the puzzle I'm going to do today. It's called Miracle of the Magic Squares by Bobsy Builder. Now, Bob's new to us, um, but has come up with this as his first construction, um, and construction's obviously the right word with Bob's a builder. Um, and there are, there is no grid coming, this is it. Uh, just a set of rules that apparently allow us to complete this um, uniquely. The rules are not very complicated, I promise you. So let's have a look at what they are. I mean, this is amazing that this completes uniquely. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we're gonna put one to nine in every row, every column, oops, and every three by three box. I'm laughing because there are no clues in the grid. Now, here we go. In the grid, there are five identical magic squares. A magic square being a three by three area in which the column, in which the rows and the columns and the two diagonals all have the same sum. So let's say this was one of the magic squares here. Then, uh, then let's just create the pen tool, there we go. Then every row would add up to the same sum. Every column would add up to that sum as well. And each of the two main diagonals would add up to that sum as well. Oops, I can't draw that last line. Oh, it's fallen apart. Anyway, each of those six, no, eight lines would add up to the same sum. That's how it works. Um, in addition, and there are five identical ones in this puzzle, and that means they're fully cloned, position for position, number for number. In addition, there is a sixth three by three magic square, the special square. The special square contains the same layout of digits as the other five magic squares, but rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise or anti-clockwise, and it's composed of the center digits of the nine three by three Sudoku boxes in the same layout. Therefore, there's a magic square in these cells. Um, we can treat those as a sort of exploded magic square. Now, there's only one more sort of rule to come. Along the negative diagonal, from row one, column one, to row nine, column nine, a digit's value cannot be within one of its row and column number. So row four, column four, can't, that's in row four, so it can't be three, four, or five. However, there's one naughty cell on this diagonal, which is breaking this rule, and the location of the naughty digit is to be determined. I mean, it's a peculiar set of rules. No, not so much in that it's peculiar in itself, but that it gives a unique solution seems highly improbable to say the least. But let's see how the magic unfolds. Um, give it a try if you fancy it on the link under the video or watch me have a go. I'm going to start now. No idea how long this is gonna take. Um, right. What I'm going to do, first of all, is to colour, in the colours that my palette allows, all the cells in that exploded, the special square. That's what it's called in the rules, the special square. Now, 
those form a magic square, I think we're reasonably entitled to assume that we're using the digits one to nine. And indeed, I don't think you can make a magic square without either using the digits one to nine or repeating digits so often that they would break Sudoku rules. So pretty confident that that's going to be right. Um, in fact, I'm 100% sure, if I'm honest. Now, well, okay, I know some things about magic squares, and what's more, I can prove those things rather than just reciting them. Um, the first is, okay, let's, let's consider these nine colored squares as a magic square using the digits one to nine. Now, we know what the digits one to nine add up to. We occasionally share this secret with you. It's always 45. Therefore, each row is going to add up to a third of 45. That number's 15. So every row, column, and diagonal is going to add up to 15. Now, that is, as I said before, um, eight different sums of 15 within the square. What's more, this central cell is in four of those different sums, because it's, it's in a row, a column, and both diagonals. Now, there is only one digit that can go with other digits four different times. And that means this central cell is a five. Um, now, the next question is, where does a one go in this sort of magic square? And we're not going to know the absolute answer, but it is worth considering whether it can go in the numbers that are um, horizontal or vertical from the five or the numbers that are diagonal. Now, a one can only form two different sums of 15 with other Sudoku digits, one, five, nine, and one, six, eight, because the other two have to add up to 14. Now, that means it can't go into a corner because these form three different sums, one across, one down, and one diagonal. So the one and the nine, the nine is very similar, must go in these cells. In fact, they must go opposite each other to make the sum of 15 work. Now, we don't know which way they go, but wherever the one does go, let's guess it was there, the digits on either side of it now have to add up to 14 and they can't use the 5. So they will be 6 and 8. Um, and then opposite 6 and 8, <clears throat> given the 5 in the centre, will be 2 and 4. And you must end up with the evens in the corners and the odds in these horizontal and vertically next to the 5 cells. So we could actually write in 1379 in those now and 2468 in these. And I have a feeling that what we're going to be trying to do is now colour the grid. So let's go back to the rule now. Oh, it's worth mentioning that I believe that all possible magic squares using 1 to 9 are basically the same square <clears throat> only they can be rotated or reflected. Um, I don't know if that'll matter. We, we may see it as we go along. Right, now the next question I'm going to ask is we have to fit five magic squares in this grid. And we are, okay, first, first things first, maybe we're told that what we have here in terms of the colours, this, this set of nine, is the 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 square that repeats five times, but it's been rotated counterclockwise. Now, I'm going to assume for a moment that this central box is one of the squares. It's very likely because it's got five in the middle, but I just want to see what the colouring of this square is. If we rotate it now clockwise one turn, 90 degrees, then it's going to look like this. Silver, bright green, bright blue, then orange, then blue, then yellow, then red, then the darker green. So it's going to look like that. And this is the magic square that we have to replicate five times in the puzzle. We don't know for sure yet, I don't think, that it's in this central box. But we do now know that everywhere it appears, it has red, green, silver in that order at the top yellow, purple, bright green in the second row, blue, orange, light blue in the bottom row. 
obviously you can't get two of these into the same set of rows and columns, or you would be repeating red cells w within that row, say. And red is always the same number in this puzzle. So, there are seven possible rows in which these five clones could begin. We have to get five clones that are in, that all begin in different rows. I'm just going to number these rows down the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm not going beyond that because obviously you can't begin a three by three below that row seven. Now, yes, excellent. Right, I can rule out row six as the starting row for one of these three by threes by looking at dark blue. Because the third row of the colourful the colourful magic square that we are looking to find is dark blue, orange, bright blue. Now if you were to start a magic square in row six, its third row would be here. Now we've already placed the blue cell here and we therefore can't have a blue, orange, bright blue because it would take bright blue out of the grid. So there is no magic square beginning in row six. And if we look at silver, we can do the same to row two. In row two, we can't start anything with red, green, silver because silver is already there and there isn't enough room on its left. So this is good. Each of the five clones we have to find has one begins in rows one, three, four, five, or seven, one of each. Now the one that begins in row four has its middle in row five, and its middle is a purple cell, and we already knew where purple was in row five from the five that we placed at the beginning, so it actually has to be this. So this guess, very unsurprisingly, was correct for row four. We've placed the magic square for row f that begins in row four. Now let's think about the one that begins in row three. So its third row, which has to contain blue, orange, bright blue, is in this row. We've placed orange, so we can just whack this in. And I think this puzzle is going to get relatively straightforward now we've understood this about these magic squares. So there is the magic square appearing again. That's its second clone, and that one started in row three. We need one that starts in row five, and its top row is going to go red, green, silver. Well, that's got to go through this green. So let's do that. Red, green, silver. Its second row is yellow, purple, bright green. You know, apologies to the color blind, but I have to find a way of solving this puzzle. And although I could do it with letters, it would be much more confusing and less pretty, frankly, to, to those of us who are seeing colours OK. Now, in row, the one beginning in row seven, its middle row is going to be yellow, purple, green, bright green. Well, we already have yellow place, so we know where it's going to go. It is actually, once you get your mind organised around this, it is actually very straightforward to place these in. The next stage of the puzzle, after we've got these, might be a little trickier, or it might not. That's row seven. And the one in row one, its middle row is yellow, purple, bright green again. So we know exactly where that goes because the bright green is placed in this row. And we now have kind of, well, we will now have placed all five identical clones. We don't know their numbers, obviously. We've only got one digit in this puzzle so far. But we are really homing in on a solution, I think. So and we're getting a very colourful grid. Maybe the veins of a windmill are now coloured, and these cells as well. Um, I suppose they could be on the veins. Now, we need to kind of colour the rest of the grid, I think. Right, the, the cells missing, the colours missing from here, since we know that's all the nine digits, those aren't in this box yet, in box two, so they have to go here somewhere. So we need to place red, yellow and blue. That must be red. This one sees blue, so that's yellow and that's blue. I think in the same principle, those three cells must occupy these three. So we can fill in blue, orange, and bright blue. These three must be the same as these three. So we get silver. 
that's green because it can't be red, and that's red. Down here, they're going to be these digits. Bright blue is there. That can't be silver, so it's green, and that's silver. Okay, can we finish off the colouring now? What do, what do we need in this column? We need a purple, that has to go here, and an orange. In this column, we need purple again, and not orange this time, but a green, the darker green. In this row, purple again. Uh, there's some symmetry going on with purple here. And this other colour is what? not a blue, it is a green, it's a bright green. Here we need a purple again, and this one is yellow. Then can we do row eight? What do we need here? We need a, no we can't both, we need an orange there, and silver. So in row two we need different colours, we need a green of some sort, the darker green, that's here, and the darker blue. Then, okay, we've got just rows one and nine to finish off. We need a red here, and a green, the darker green over this side. Now we need a yellow, and a, not a blue, a bright green. Up here we need a yellow somewhere, that's there. We need orange somewhere, that's there. We need bright blue, that's there. And this is the last one, this is a bright green. Okay, so we've coloured the whole grid. Now we just have to identify the numbers. And I'm going to turn to this rule about the final rule, because we, we've used everything else. <laughs> it's a bit like a fog puzzle. Whatever else is left must be the thing to use next. Along the negative diagonal, a digit's value cannot be within one of its row or column number, except for one naughty digit. That's the only digit we've placed in the puzzle. We've put five in row five, column five. That's the naughty digit. There it is. Oh, we could colour all the purples. Uh, we could number all the purples five, couldn't we? Since we know that five is purple. And there, we've ninefold the number of digits we had in the grid a moment ago. <clears throat> now, ah, oh, blue repeats. Right, this digit cannot be 2 or 4 because it's in row 3. So it's 6 or 8. This digit is in row 8, so it can't be 8. So blue is therefore 6 and we can stick them all in. Bam! In this central magic square, we need this to add up to 15, this diagonal. So silver has become 4. And it's not, if silver appears twice on that diagonal too, and it's not breaking the rules, because it doesn't appear in those cells. Now, on a, in a magic square, where does nine go? Nine doesn't go in a row or a column with six, because that would get to 15 already and there's still a digit to come. So nine is in one of the shades of green next to four. But one of the shades of green is that cell on that diagonal in row nine, column nine. So that can't be nine. So the other shade of green is nine. And now, now we can just finish this magic square by adding to 15 everywhere, and we're gonna finish the puzzle. That's amazing. Right, so nine plus five is 14. Yellow is a one. <clears throat> Six plus one is seven. Red is an eight. Four plus nine is 13. Bright blue is a two. 8 plus 4 is 12, dark green is a 3, and this other number must be a 7. Oh, we've got a 3 in the corner, losing its religion. Um, 3 plus 5 is 8, 6 plus 2 is 8, this is a 7, and there we go, bingo! Bam! <laughs> 15 minutes. Oh, that is a fantastic puzzle, isn't it? Absolutely extraordinary. How intriguing. The Miracle of the Magic Squares by Bobsy Builder. Um, and it's, it has miraculously solved itself in a way. No, I mean, let's give Bob credit. He didn't just discover this. He may have discovered the layout of five magic squares or even have found that from someone else or something. I don't know. I mean, whatever he's done, he's come up with that. But he's then used it to fill the grid and then disambiguated the numbers using that rule on the diagonal, which is genius clever. 
We often have people who try and send us rule sets for empty grids. Well, often, I mean occasionally. And they tend to be very long, complicated rule sets. This is brilliant because it isn't. And it is quite miraculous. It's quite miraculous in a way that you can fit five cloned magic squares into a grid. I'm not, I didn't know that. It's just intriguing, a brilliant puzzle. Really fun to get to do this sort of thing on the channel. Hope you'll join us for more. We'll be back tomorrow. Simon will post for 8.30 our time. I'll be up at 11 p.m. And uh, we hope you'll join us for more Sudoku uh, because it can be so revealing, such fun. And you get to discover us, discovering what's going on. Absolute pleasure. Well done, Bob. And we'll see you again then. Bye for now.